Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, I'm going to show you something that I just learned about and I'm very excited about. Did you know there's a new DOS web browser under development and it's targeted to run on hardware just like this with 8088 CPUs, 640 kilobytes of memory, and CGA graphics? Well, there is and it's called MicroWeb. Currently, it's not 100% complete, but it does have some cool capabilities, so I thought we'd have a look at it today and probably in the future as well. So today, what we'll do is take you through the installation and configuration of MicroWeb, and from there, I'll show you what it looks like in virtual hardware, as opposed to doing it on real hardware, complete with scan lines. I think it'll be easier on the eyes. We'll plan to do that, and then I'll give you my take on MicroWeb in the outbrief. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go! In order to build MicroWeb, we'll look at the directions here in the J.H. Howard MicroWeb repository, which is the home of MicroWeb. If we scroll to the bottom, there are build instructions. This does note that we need to use the OpenWatcom 1.9 C++ compiler. If we click on this link, it will take us to the SourceForge webpage for this. Now, I'm not going to go over the installation procedure for this, but I will link you to a video where I show you how to install this compiler. Great. Okay, so assuming it is installed, we are going to download the source code for this. And to do this, I have copied a link to the GitHub repository and I have Git installed on my Windows machine. I'm going to clone the repository into a new directory, which will be called MicroWeb, and change to MicroWeb Project DOS, and run wmake. And from there, it will build, and it's pretty fast. I've sped it up here. Once done, we will have a file called microweb.exe. That's it. So next up, we need to look at configuring MicroWeb. So I'll scroll down here and we'll look at the network setup required. And to do this, we're basically going to grab some packet drivers for VirtualBox, since I'll be doing this virtually. You can search for this online. PCNTPK is what you want. I found it on the website you see here. We've downloaded that. I've also taken the liberty to create a TCP.CFG file, which we will go over here shortly. And you can also customize to your installation. So I've unzipped the packet drivers and we'll go ahead and copy those to the download root directory so that everything is in a nice, neat place. And we'll also go to the microweb projects DOS directory and find the executable that we built and also copy that to the download directory because what I'm going to do basically is get everything in one place here. We'll delete the files we don't need, including the zip file we downloaded and the folder that contained the packet driver. And that leaves three files. TCP configuration, microweb, and the packet driver. So what we're going to do next is actually create a fake floppy disk or a floppy disk image that is 1.44 megabytes, and we're going to inject into it the contents of the downloads directory. And by doing this, we'll have everything that we need on this disk that will allow us to run microweb in VirtualBox. So from there, I've got all that where it needs to be. It also injected a desktop INI file. Let's get rid of that. And from there, we can see we have the three files from our download directory. Let's do a file save as. Make sure to change the type to be not compressed so that it works with VirtualBox. And then from there, we can give it a name such as MicroWeb, whatever you'd like it to be. Perfect. Now this does assume that you have a VirtualBox set up with MS-DOS I do have several videos on my YouTube channel that show how to do that, but it's a pretty standard practice. It involves using MS-DOS and FDisk. I'm gonna go ahead and inject the floppy disk we created into the virtual machine. And let's see here, we'll get navigated, click open, and now we'll go full screen so you can see everything. We'll change to that drive A where the installation is, if you will. And I'm gonna go ahead and initialize my packet driver PCNTPK INT equals 0x65 so that we can give it a nice interrupt of 65. 
From there, we're going to set an environment variable, mtcp cfg, equal to the configuration file we copied over, tcp.cfg. And I promised you I would go over the contents of this file. The first line is the packet driver interrupt that we set just a minute ago, and it does need to match for purposes of TCP configuration. The second line is a spare IP address on your network. This can be whatever you would like, as long as it is spare and in your network space. The third line is the net mask for your network. The fourth line is the gateway for your network. The fifth line is the name server, and this is important, especially as we navigate to websites by name, you will want to make sure that you have a name server set. And finally, I have also set an MTU setting, though I don't think that's particularly critical for what we're doing here, but I tend to have it in my tcp.configuration file. So you can go ahead and make whatever modifications you need, assuming that your network is not 192.168.1 based or what have you, get this where it needs to be, and then you too will have your configuration all ready to go to connect using MicroWeb. So with everything configured, it's just time to go ahead and run MicroWeb. So here it is. Let's have a look at the keyboard shortcuts associated with MicroWeb. You've got Escape, you've got F2, F6, Tab, Shift, Tab, and Backspace, which are gonna be your key keyboard shortcuts. So let's press F6 so that we can go up to the title bar, and I'll just go ahead and go to google.com for illustrative purposes. Now we don't see any images because images have not been implemented yet, but we did navigate to google.com successfully and it looks pretty darn good if I do say so myself. Not bad for CGA style graphics. Next we'll navigate to my webpage and no, this is not shameless self-promotion. I just happen to know that it works. So once there, we can go ahead and use the tab key to tab down to one of the articles on the page or one of the posts and then tab down to frog find because this browser does not support HTTPS. And there you have it. There's my blog post in its entirety. And this is actually a fairly recent one. And it reads pretty nice. Once again, the font is really nice and easy to read. Cool. So we'll go ahead and exit out and I'll do what I probably should have done in the first place. And that is load a mouse driver. Let's go ahead and launch again with a mouse driver loaded. And now we have a nice mouse cursor we don't have to use hotkeys. We can then click around. We can go to different websites. We can click on links and it's much easier to navigate now. So I'll come down here, click on a link. We can go to Vintage Computing Fest Midwest.org, which I do plan to attend by the way, and click on links there. And we can see that things navigate well. We can click the back button in the browser and go back to where we came from. So this looks really, really good. We can also scroll down on the page and everything works absolutely great. So there you have it. That's current day microweb in a nutshell. And as far as my opinion, I am very impressed. This application does a nice job of making use of MTCP. It's fast. It's even fast on older hardware. So I think it's got a lot going for it. I look forward to reviewing it again as more capabilities like graphics are introduced. As you can see right now, we're only text. So looking forward to that as well. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Please do subscribe to the channel. There's more content on the way. Ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when that new content is made available. If you liked what you saw today, please do give us a thumbs up. If not, consider sending me a strong message by pressing that thumbs down button twice. As always, it's been great having you along for the journey, and I look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, bye for now.